This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. I'm Kei'i Akina. Just delighted to have a good friend on the program today to talk about something that is near and dear to all of us. It's the environment. The environment has a tremendous impact on the quality of life in Hawaii, but we as people have a tremendous impact on the quality of the environment. And sometimes the government is helpful, but very often the government is not helpful. There's a gentleman in Hawaii who's become known as Hawaii's leading watchdog in terms of the environment, who's constantly digging up facts that the public generally doesn't know, that are sometimes hidden from the public, and he exposes them. His name is Carol Cox, and perhaps you've seen him in the news. I'm glad he's going to be here today to tell us a little bit about some of the things he's done. And then stick around. He'll let you know a little more about some of the breaking news that is coming from his own investigation. Please welcome to the program my good friend, environmental watchdog, Carol Cox. Carol, aloha. So good to have you back on the program. How are you doing? Aloha, Kaylee. I'm fine. Thank you for having me on the show. You and I are kindred spirit. We're always trying to look out for the common person. We are common people. Exactly. <laughs> Against powers start. that be. And it's just so glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. So, environmental watchdog, what in the world is that? Well, it's not a lap dog. <laughs> That's uh, right. Let's establish that. And, and, and in, in that role, it's not a role that most people, they see and they thank you, but many of them would like to just bludgeon you like uh, I've uh, shown in the past two years or so. Uh, actually, my life was threatened. My house was bombed. My goodness. So being a watchdog is a, a very fragile, sensitive, and dangerous position in life. But... We deserve clean air, clean water, and honest government. Well, now, let me put it this way. We've got a lot of government already. We've got the Environmental Protection Agency. We've got the Department of Land and Natural Resources. We've got federal, state, and county departments all receiving taxpayer dollars to watch out for the environment to keep us all safe. Why in the world do we need anything more than that? Are they doing their job, or are they possibly part of the problem? With all of them being in existence, look at the state of affairs today. And that would be give you the best assessment and the ability to make an assessment. They have failed and failed miserably. Uh, we've allowed politics, we've allowed money to enter into the game. When it first started off, it was to protect. It was an honest effort to protect and preserve and wisely use these natural resources as they see fit and preserve the clean air and the clean water. Well, you know, there are a lot of people who are not very aware of some of the environmental problems that we have in Hawaii. When we think of environmental damage, we think of the Exxon Valdez or the British Petroleum ship uh, leaking all of its oil, or we think of Boston Harbor, or we think of Detroit near the, the mill, steel mills and the industrial center. People have this image that Hawaii is pristine and clean and uh, safe for our children. What is your thought? Well, that is a very nice dream uh, that we, we s seek to uh, make it a reality. But the reality is Hawaii is one of the most polluted places there are. Remember, the agricultural activities, the, the use of high um, insecticides and defoliants and what have you, they present a problem. They percolate down after they've been applied to the land, percolate down into the groundwater, threatening your groundwater, presenting problems with cancers and other diseases, uh, run off into the streams, killing the oopu or the native species or the aquatic species in the marine environment, going out to the ocean, silt from agricultural practices uphill and golf courses and the pollutants and the chemicals used. So you get the idea. Uh, we need strict management, strict control of these things, and, and honest people, whether it's agriculture or government. But the biggest failure that I've come to learn in the state of Hawaii is the government. The government is one of the bigger polluters in the, in the state of Hawaii, both city, county, state, and federal. You sound kind of like Ronald Reagan, that old expression, government is not the solution to our problem, it is our problem. Is that what you're saying with regard to these environmental situations? I, funny you mention that because I say government is a pollution to our problem. Uh. Or the pollution, <laughs> to, really. Well, uh, I'm, I'm laughing, but uh, 
the irony leaves us very sad when we really think about it, what's going on here. The very people whom we pay to protect us are not doing that. Thus, the need for a watchdog. Right. Now, Carol, what I hope you do before you leave today is give us some insights into some of the current issues. And I know you're breaking some research with regard to the, the, the Red Hill fuel storage facility. Mm -hmm. We'll save that for later, but mm -hmm. I think our viewers are going to learn some things about that that they will hear nowhere else except from the mouth of Carol Cox. Mm -hmm. But before that, uh, familiarize our viewers with some of the, the issues you've dug into before. For example, out in Miley, wasn't there uh, a dumping of waste product by the city itself on government lands? Now, laying a backdrop, Hawaii, and especially the island communities, uh, we've lost quite a bit of wetlands. Mm -hmm. and there, it's essential to have wetlands because of native birds or the many water birds that right. rely on that, and, and they are the the rookeries for certain young fish or larvae and whatever. Birds, fish, insects, mm -hmm. plants, the, you name it, it's all so out there. So in Miley, there's a stream, Mailili Stream, up by... Uh, in, in Mailili Stream. My, yeah, yes. That is a remnant uh, area, piece of land that serves as a wetlands. The city and county of Honolulu was removing concrete from downtown Kapolei, Kapole anywhere over around the island, and stockpiling. And then on weekends, the men had orchestrated a, a little game of, uh, I call it a game, but it's, it was theft, to take this concrete, slabs of it, and bury it and dump it into the stream, therefore rendering the wetlands just completely useless. What's the impact of all of that dumping upon the life in the stream and, well, and the people it, who live around it? It displaces the water and does mm -hmm. not it impedes the flow of the water and the collection of water and the, the native plants or the plants that are critical to the survival of the galanu or the coot or the kaloa. Uh -huh. And so in doing that, they were the scheme was to gather overtime for work that they should have taken it and dumped it at the landfill but instead they short stop and dump it in the stream. And so we were tipped off So we've off got by two that. infractions at least going on here. We've got mm -hmm. illegal dumping where it shouldn't take place. Yes. But we've got that taking place because people wanted to game the system and gain it over time. Right. And, and, but it was government now, city and county of Honolulu workers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was orchestrated by management, some portions of the management as when we were first uh, brought into the picture, the fold of it, the tip was they are giving favoritism on weekends to bury, illegally bury and haul cement up to the area near Nanakuli, Maile, and dumping it in the stream. But only select few were allowed to work overtime. Well, this has a lot of dimensions that are simply wrong. The government itself is trying to get around the environmental laws and do something illegal. And in order to do it, 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 it incentivizes workers to break the law as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I just recently down at Alamoana Park, there's signs in the stream there that say, this water is contaminated with sewage water. N no shame anymore. So when I say this, it is government who contributes to the worst polluting situations, S count the number of sewage spills that we have. Mm. These are Clean Water Act violations many times, but how do, and we're already on the consent decree, so they've already had the hand slap, been sued, and they continue to spill. Now, going back to the Maili wetlands, you exposed that, didn't mm -hmm. you? What did you show and, and what happened? Well, we showed uh, the tons and tons of cement slabs and, and uh, just dumped and buried, and they were pushing them down in the mud to conceal them and uh, displacing the, the animals or the wild, the endangered birds that were there, the Hawaiian stilt, the gallinule, and what have you. Now, mind you, Waianae coastline does not have that many wetlands left. So this was very a, a shocker that the last remnant piece of land that would have lent itself, that lent itself to habitat, was taken, taken into no consideration. Well, that's terrible. And so I'm glad that you were on the, the, the job doing that. Uh, you've also been out in the Waianae Nanakuli area on other issues, particularly the usages of our native Hawaiian Hawaiian homelands and mm -hmm. the, the usages that the Department of Hawaiian Homelands puts them to. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, now you want to bring up old 
uh, bombings. <laughs> no, I, I chuckle because... Uh, There's it, a bit of drama to this story. It, it's bittersweet because, first of all, uh, the people of Hawaii deserve what is rightfully theirs. When there's an agency structured and in place to, to assist in making sure and assure the public or the native people that they have this and protect their interests, squanders it by allowing friends to get extra leases while denying others from any leases, while having long lines and vacant houses. So the work that I did there was finding illegal dump chemicals and soils and dirt and waters dumped on Hawaiian homelands. So let me see what you're saying. On one hand, you're alluding to the fact that there are people who can't get on the land. In fact, you didn't mention it, but currently I think there are about 27,000 Native Hawaiians on the waiting list for Hawaiian homelands mm -hmm. who have qualified but who are not able to move in. And thousands have died on that list. You're saying that instead some of that land is being used as illegal dump sites. Illegal dump sites, illegal storage of soil, illegal uh, car uh, stripping, illegal, you name it, just use your imagination. But what was really painful that I discovered, at the Kalailoa area, mm -hmm. land was given to individuals, non-native people, and they were using and making great profit, and uh, the DHHL allowed them to use the land because they felt that the quote was, they prov by their presence, in lieu of getting rent from them, they provide security to the land. What and was they provide weed whacking and what have you. What was going on in terms of some of these businesses that was harmful to the environment and the people? Rock crushing, bringing in uh, chemicals and oils and disposing of them, taking oil and waste oil and uh, dumping it and burning it and what have you in that, uh, in that area. Storing of... Uh, uh, calcium uh, hydroxide or chloride, 13 tons we found. It was used, a portion of it was used on the big island, but it was brought back here and just dumped and stored. And we did many uh, news stories on that, but uh, the Department of Hawaiian Homeland is shamefully broken. And, and many occasions, they just don't address anything. Now, I recall that it was in the news that when you were out there actually investigating the site itself, that something happened to you physically. Well, I was approached and uh, three, four guys got out of a car and very methodically, professionally, hit men and, and start to wail away with a pipe or, or a bat. And uh, I survived that. But uh, the funny thing is that wasn't, they didn't get enough in, so they f uh, came to my home. Oh, well, before we go on with the home, so you, you were in the hospital, and you had how many stitches? Uh, I don't know how many stitches. I didn't stay in the hospital because uh, what, at the time now, as foolhardy as this sound may sound, I, I felt that that time I wanted to show the public this is what happens, this is a state of affairs. The Department of Hawaiian Homeland, who I had been reporting and going and investigating on various parcels and on the big island and here and there, took no interest in supporting uh, that. And, and when I was stricken by these uh, people, uh, they did nothing. It's, it's on state land, you would think they would have initiated an investigation. To date, the police has done no investigation. The um, sheriff has done no investigation. So the Hawaiian homelands is broken. And, and when I say broken, I mean in the worst way because I'm afraid if we ever learn the amount of chemicals and toxins that have been illegally dumped on Hawaiian homeland, we would immediately remove many of the people and give them better lands and, and because of the cancers and things of that nature, the threats or the risk to cancer and breathing the dirt, and the oils and the soils that have been dumped there illegally. Well, this is something. Now, who were these people that accosted you, who attacked you physically, and brought harm to you? They not particularly, not their names necessarily, but who did they represent? Well, uh, trucking companies, and they were Native Hawaiians, and believe it or not, people and companies a, that were benefiting from the land as yeah. clients. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I want to hear the rest of the story. You said that you got followed to your home and something happened there. Well, and um, I'm going to cut you off right now for a moment because we're going to take a quick break and we're at a cliffhanger. Okay. <laughs> Which means that if you're watching, you definitely have to come back to hear the rest of the story. It gets even bigger. I'm Kili'i Akina interviewing my friend Carol Cox, who's one of Hawaii's leading environmental watchdogs. And we're taking a look at what the nature of being a watchdog is the personal harm and danger that comes in the quest to do good for all. Now, Carol is here as a private individual citizen, and so am I, although I also happen to be a state representative in the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, a trustee. I'm not here today in my capacity as a government a a representative or agent. I'm here simply as a citizen like you, listening to an individual tell his story. We'll hear the rest of Carol Cox when we come back from this break. Aloha. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on Think Tech. Hello. We're back again with Carol Cox, Hawaii's environmental watchdog. I'm Kili'i Akina on Hawaii Together. Carol has given us a fascinating story of some of the adventures, if you will, allowing to call them, he's gone through in the, in the commitment he's made to be Hawaii's environmental watchdog. And we're going to pick up with one in terms of what he found happened to him when he began to dig in places he perhaps shouldn't have been dig digging if he wanted to maintain his complete safety. Let's pick up that story. Not only did you get beat up on Hawaiian homelands, eventually at your home you got a message. Well, I, on the school playground it's called beat up, but I was, uh, it was an attempted murder. And uh, that was, whatever message was sent, I didn't get it because I don't listen in that tone. So the, the, the initial striking, I went to the hospital, got stitched up, felt that what a godsend. Here I'm able to stand on and show that whatever it is that I'm working on, if you didn't believe it was important, now you should believe it because I'm wearing stitches and a bandage and bloody shirt for trying to do what's right for the native people and the people of the state. And so if someone's willing to strike you for that, by golly, that was the perfect, it was a, a, a gift. But then a couple of days later, a week later or so, uh, I hear boom in my garage. And it's someone was attempting to, two men attempting to set and ignite fires. And they were successful. So they set on one car, blew up, uh, and the, whatever mechanism or gadgets they were using, it ignited and prematurely on the one in the driveway. So I had two cars ablaze, and the intent was to set the cars on fire and then they were in the garage and then they would in turn uh, burn the house down. Oh my goodness. What did that, uh, what were you doing at the time? What was your family doing when that happened? Well, uh, funny you would ask that. I was in there writing a, a letter, uh, getting ready to do a, a TV, my, my uh, radio show about the Hawaiian homeland. <laughs> and uh, I heard boom. And I thought I'd go out to see what it was, and voila, there's flames and, the, you know, smoke. Now, you've tried your best to bring the, the, these situations before the authorities, is that right? Oh, yeah. And, and, and what has happened? Well, they don't, the authorities in this town don't care much about the environment, and the damn sure don't care about anybody that's reminding them that they should care about the environment. It was just, just not receptive. And it's more of an annoyance, even though we talk about how beautiful Hawaii is. But very few people really have it in their hearts to stand up and, and, and understand the basic need to protect these 
elements, the water, the air, the clean soil, and what have you. Now, you're currently working on some pretty hot topics, and I think one of them is one you've worked on a long time, and I, I'm really not aware of anyone else who has gone to the extent of investigation you have down at Red Hill, which is a, uh, near Pearl Harbor. It's a military facility where we have some military housing, and there is also something known as a, a fuel storage mm -hmm. facility. Uh, I don't know the precise term of it, but uh, you could give that to us. This fuel storage facility in Red Hill has been the subject of your investigations because of its impact on the environment and the people who live there. Mm -hmm. This is the Red Hill Buck Fuel Storage Facility there in Halava area. Okay. Near the stadium. Near the stadium. And uh, now, let me say this clearly. I believe that is one of the greatest shameful or sh things done, committed on the people here in Hawaii. Hmm. Violation of their trust, their rights and all. And that is the Red Hill facility is leaking fuel and has leaked fuel and its contaminants or constituents, components of that fuel into the aquifer. And that is documented by the monitoring wells that were installed to monitor for components such as or constituents such as TPH, naphthalene, and other chemicals associated with oils. Now, no one is arguing or debating the, are these tanks leaking and responding, but now they have the public engaged in a debate, in a discussion. What you, should we do? Should we coat them with some material or should we replace them? The public has no reason to be involved in that. Do the right thing as structure them to make them sure that they're sound. I want to know what are you going to do about the contaminants that's in the water, the drinking water now? Okay, and so you're, you're saying that there is an inadequate response to the situation, but let me back up a little bit with you. You've said a lot. Uh -huh. you, you said that it has generally been acknowledged that contaminants have leaked from the fuel storage facility into the aquifer. Uh, but haven't we been told that that's not at a very significant level, that that's not at an unsafe level for our water supply and so forth? Well, that's the dilemma. That, that is what creates the problem, what they say. And, but what is it that they're being transparent about and what are they showing? You're suggesting that it's actually dangerous. I'm saying that, be more specific, there's things called environmental action levels set by and utilized by the State Department of Health to monitor constituents of concern of contaminants in wa drinking water, soil, or air. So to, not to get technical, the EALs, we'll call it, the reports that we have that was generated by the Navy, submitted to the State Health Department, clearly talks about specific levels where they certain constituents, TPHD, TPHG, naphthalene, have exceeded the EALs that were set by the D Department of Health. And when they were exceeding that level, the State Health Department just casually increased those numbers to make it safe again. So Call you're saying you know, the, the standard got changed, that, that you're saying, your claim, Mm -hmm. is that when it was found that the state was in, or the, the uh, military was in violation of the state standards, that the standards got dropped yes. so that they were no longer in violation of them. Well, that's, to, quite, that's quite a claim. To quote the Navy's contractor said that the DOH revised its EALs. Now, the DOH has a disclaimer that says that whatever they write and tell you today is not binding and that you and I, they can change it arbitrarily if they want to, whenever they wish to, and you and I as public entities do not have a right to comment or are, we obliga are they obligated to notify us of those changes? So you're suspicious that these were not... Uh, not uh, good changes made to the system. They weren't objective changes, but they were being done, you suspect, to cover up uh, the problem. This, uh, quoting me, 
this is an unlawful act and a fraud, defrauding the public of what has transpired. We have the documentation. The documentation would come, you see, they were required to do reports, quarterly reports, they being the Navy. So these are not my words, and I'm, I'm just chipping away at some of the phrases, but there are substantial documents and reports. Now your concern is over the discourse going on on what to do about this. Uh, and you mentioned that some people think it has to do with the storage facility, something needs to be done. I mean, what, what are the solutions people are looking at, and what are your thoughts about it? Well, let's first of all go back and put it in its proper perspective. Mm -hmm. This is the aquifer that is one of the main aquifers for the island of Oahu. How many people drink from that and provided water? Some say all the way to Waianae, Hawaii Kai. Uh, the Board of Water Supply has raised concerns also about this very subject of the increasing of the EALs. And other doctors or PhD people are looking at this as saying, how could you justify so quickly to change arbitrarily and being capricious about it? How can you do that? So there's really no answers. But the narrative that the state health department and the Navy, in my observation and the opinion that I've drawn based on the documentation and the activity that I witnessed, it is defrauding the public and basically outright lying to the public about, and they want you to be engaged, become expert tank designers and pipe fitters and whatever, when in fact, we first need to show the priority or come to the realization that the clean water, the quality of the water is what we are concerned with. How you store your fuel and what have you, that's your business. That's your kuleana. But keeping your contaminants out of our drinking water and our soil and our air is what we should be worried about. Well, you know, this is a fascinating story, and I'm sure that many of our viewers are hearing it for the first time because it's not one that is frequently spoken of. But we've come to the end of our very quick half hour together, and I'm going to have to have you back another time to see where it goes. Before we close, just really quickly in the next several seconds, where do you go from here with, with this information? Well, we're looking to file a legal action of some sort, and there's a supremacy clause that is in the Constitution that speaks specifically to this behavior. But we're going to appeal to the EPA and, and others and come up with some legal approach to Very this. Very good because it's, it's necessary. It's and you have a website that has an ongoing broadcast program. Would you take a look at camera number three and just tell uh, people, uh, or camera one over here, tell people how to access that? Yeah, go to carolcox.com and you can see all 600, 700 shows that talk early about EALs and Red Hill and what have you, and many of the other subjects that we work, worked on in the past. Well, thank you. Carol, very informative. Thank you for being here, and All I right. wish you the best. And I'm also going to be praying for your safety as you continue to be Hawaii's environmental watchdog. Pray for the people. I'm, I'm expendable. Well, we but all the people, the young kids and our Absolutely. kiki and what have you, and the less fortunate, they deserve better. Absolutely. My guest today has been Carol Cox, Hawaii's environmental watchdog. Do take a look at his information, and thank you for being here today on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina. Until next time, aloha.